by being happy and positive and accepting of who you are as a person, you immediately move yourself to a lifeline of much more abundance and happiness and prosperity and all of those good things that you would like in your life. For the rugged, for the rugged. Been a little too nice to y'all. Now I gotta up price for y'all. Snake eyes on dice for y'all. Shoulders on ice for y'all. Yo, what's going on? It is Miguel. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about why you should avoid resentment and judgment at all cost as it relates to reality transurfing. So if you don't know what reality transurfing is, it is basically the law of attraction on steroids. It's a much more in-depth way of thinking about the law of attraction, a much more scientifically based, and there are some spiritual aspects to it as well. But this book in particular does not go much into that. It only goes into the thinking and uh, the, the relationship between you and the universe as a whole. So the, if you haven't watched the video where I talk about excess potential and balancing forces, you should probably check that out first. This video will still make sense, but that video goes, has a broad overview of what excess potential is and balancing forces is, but I will touch on them so this video makes sense as well. Now, if you are unaware of exactly what reality transurfing is, keep in mind that the, real, the reality that you see is the reality that you have brought into your life. The thoughts that you've been having and the actions that you have been taking have all led to you having to being on the lifeline that you are on right now. There are multiple parallel realities within the universe. Uh, multiple scientists have stated this fact. Multiple spiritual people have stated this as a fact as well. Everyone is in agreement for various different reasons. The point is we are in agreement on this idea. And what reality transurfing states is that you are able to choose which reality you would like in your life, which parallel reality you would like to choose, which lifeline you would prefer to go down. There are multiple lifelines spread across the universe. And let's just assume you are in the middle. Based on your thoughts and your actions, you are able to move yourself either closer to good or move yourself closer to a more bad timeline. And one of the ways you are capable of moving yourself in either direction is by eliminating or not eliminating excess potential. And one of those ways of creating excess potential is through resentment and judgment. So now, the book states, uh, I'm going to be looking at the book right here, which I highly suggest you should get. If you want to get it, there's going to be a link down below that you can go ahead and purchase the book. Um, but I will be referencing the book as I go through here, all right? So the first thing it starts to talk about is resentment of self. Yes, it is possible for you to resent yourself. It says, it states that if you are intensely focused on your own foibles, excess potential will be created. There is no point in trying to hide weaknesses and overcoming them can be tricky. Trying to hide them only creates the opposite effect, which makes the situation even worse. So basically it's saying that we all have our weaknesses and for the most part, majority of people try to compensate for them or hide them entirely. For example, if you are shy, people try and do whatever they can to not seem shy. And if you've ever seen a person who is shy try to not act shy, it is a very uncomfortable situation and it highlights their shyness very, very, very much so. So that is literally balancing forces at act. When you're trying to hide your shyness, the universe goes, okay, no, that is, you're, you're putting a lot of energy there, so I'm just gonna make sure everyone can see your shyness instead. That'll work. Um, okay. Uh, it also says that if a person is dissatisfied with their achievements to the degree that it serves as motivation for self-improvement, then balance is not disturbed. So what I love about this book is that it doesn't 
create a false sense of reality or a false sense of thinking for us as humans. You are naturally going to not be quite as satisfied with where you're at in life. If you were always satisfied, then there would never be any motivation to push forward in life. There would never be any motivation to, to, to make progress. But it's natural for us to, to see an area of our life and go, I can improve in that and go ahead and do that. But where you start to create excess potential, where you start to cre- uh, feed a pendulum in your life and start to create the opposite result is when you start to become so upset with that dissatisfaction in your life where you start dwelling on it and just getting so angry and frustrated about it, frustrated about it, that the universe will not open that up for you. Instead, you will start to create more scenarios in your life where you are even more dissatisfied about that thing. So it says the outside world does not affect it and the inner shift towards balance is established via positive action. If a person starts upsetting themselves, beating themselves up, or even worse, punishing themselves, then a destructive dialogue between heart and mind is created. The heart is self-sufficient, perfect, and does not deserve to be treated so harshly. All shortcomings that a person acquires are shortcomings of the mind, not of the soul. So basically what this is saying is that everything in the universe is perfect and your heart is perfect. This is where you, your soul technically resides. Your heart does not think in terms of right and wrong or, or dissatisfied and unsatisfied. It only thinks of ter- in terms of this is my calling. This is what it is. It is meant for me to do. This makes me happy. It is everything that is of the mind. If you, if you research any Buddhist teachings or any mindfulness teachings, uh, it mentions that all unhappiness is created within the mind. You are either wanting something way too badly or not wanting something way too much. And that is where unhappiness is created. And your heart does not associate with any of that. It is just associating with what it believes will make it happy. And whenever your mind and your heart are not connected, then your heart gets confused, it gets silenced, and then you start thinking with this too much. When in reality, your mind does not have the answers, your heart does. Okay, Uh, so it says... Uh, To avoid having to turn to a psychotherapist further down the road, let yourself go and forgive yourself for your perceived imperfections. Even if you have not learned to love yourself, you can at least refrain from fueling the inner battle of self-criticism and accept yourself the way you are. So it's just a big thing of self-acceptance. There's no real need to go further into that. Just accept accept yourself as you are. See the areas that you would like to improve. That is a very healthy thing, um, but don't dwell on it. Just accept where you're at, see where you want to improve, see what you can do to improve, and just do that stuff without too much judgment of self. All right. So, sorry, I'm just scrolling a little bit. So, in terms of lifelines and trans and, and getting yourself to a positive one, it says, firstly, A happy person transmits creative energy, which shifts them onto positive life's lines. And secondly, creative energy does not create the destructive potential that balanced forces strive to eliminate. So by being happy and positive and accepting of who you are as a person, you immediately move yourself to a lifeline of much more abundance and happiness and prosperity and all of those good things that you would like in your life. And balanced forces do not come into your life to try and mess with you. Balancing forces are inherently a destructive thing because they are trying to get rid of things. And by not going with those thoughts, you immediately put yourself on more positive lifelines. So it says, if you set yourself the task of looking for the positive in every negative situation you encounter, you will find that it is not actually that difficult to do. It can even be kind of a game. If you play the game consistently, the old habit will be replaced by the new one, which will be a great benefit to you personally, but a nightmare for destructive pendulums. So what pendulums will do is they will create scenarios where 
people will start acting irate. People will start acting frustrated. Uh, you'll, you'll find that you'll end up in traffic. Someone will flick you off. All sorts of things. These are literally just pendulums at work. They are doing whatever they can to get you to focus on them, feed them your energy, and then balancing forces will come in and wipe you out. The pendulum will wipe you out. But the way to get around that, especially in terms of resentments or shortcomings that you have going on, things that you have going on, is by seeing the positive in every single negative. If you look at anything where you're like, oh, I have this shortcoming, but that is awesome because that means that I have something to do with my time. It's like, if I was perfect, then I would be, it would be boring. I wouldn't have anything to do. But because I am imperfect, that gives me something to do with my time on earth. I get to work on these things, uh, uh, improve myself in all these different fashions, and I get to see myself grow as a person. Start to see the positive in every single negative and watch as your entire life changes for the better. It says, once looking for the positive in life has become a habit, you will generate positive energy, which will build up into a po powerful flow, carrying you onto positive lifelines. If you are inspired by the prospect and consistently practice the technique of substituting one focus with another, from time to time you will notice that it is taking less conscious effort and as the habit becomes more deeply rooted, you will eventually forget altogether that you once had a habit you wanted to change. As soon as you weaken, a pendulum will find a reason to upset you and you will observe that once again you have given it your energy. Do not be disappointed if this happens. If your intention is strong, you will get there eventually. Destructive pendulums will leave you alone. All you have to do is keep reminding yourself of your original intention. And that original intention is to be positive at all times. See the positive in every situation that you occur that occurs in your life. Always, always, always see the positive. You do not have to play the obedient sheep, but neither should you enter into open confrontation with the world around you. So you're going to constantly see multiple scenarios in your life where you feel like it makes sense to go with the flow where people I actually had a conversation with my roommate recently where he was talking about how the people around him were talking about the recent stuff with Gucci and how they were racist and how people were talking about whether or not they would wear that stuff. And he doesn't actually care about that kind of stuff. Um, but he felt like he had to be a part of that conversation. Otherwise, people would start to judge him. And I was letting him know, like, you don't actually have to be a part of that. You cannot enter into any of that stuff. That is just a pendulum. You don't have to play that game. They let, let other people play in the pendulum's game. Allow yourself to back off. Now, it ends the chapter by saying, if you fe feverently, ex I don't know if I'm saying that word right. If you feverently express your discontent, the pendulum benefits. But if you quietly walk away and visit a different exhibit, you will benefit. Uh, I now and then it goes I hear you ask but what if there is nowhere else to go that there is no alternative is a misconception instilled by the pendulum in this book is dedicated to the task of reading ridding the reader of this false limiting belief so we tend to have this belief and my uh, roommate had it and I was trying to show him that that is not true we tend to have this belief that when a pendulum exists, whenever something is going on, in his case, uh, when people are talking about a bunch of negative stuff that he does not personally care about, we tend to believe that there is no other option. We have to, uh, we have to go ahead and be a part of this stupid conversation that they're having, or we have to take on all the flack from all the people who are talking about it and they're not going to like us nearly as much. In reality, you do not have to be, you do not have to play the pendulum's game. You can exist in your own reality. You can think positively and you can ignore pendulums and not care what it is that they have going on. So that is the end of that chapter. I hope that you got a lot of value out of what it is that is 
talked about in this video. I hope that you start to avoid judgment and resentment as much as possible in your life. If you got value, if you have any thoughts about this topic, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below and subscribe if you got value, like this video, and until next time, peace.